After World War II, Jamaica became a top destination for the well-heeled traveler. With hotels like Round Hill and Tower Isle, and the natural beauty of Doctor's Cave in Montego Bay and Duns River Falls in Ocho Rios, the island soon became the playground for the rich and famous. Jamaica had always been a sleepy backwater of the British Empire, until it was discovered by Americans, eager to find a relaxing refuge to escape to. Beautiful beaches, Jamaica's wonderful climate, luxurious hotels, and the soothing soundtrack of Calypso music made a trip to the island an exotic and romantic getaway. In the southern coastal capital city of Kingston, the tourist havens on the north coast seemed far away. In 1962, the long history of British rule was coming to an end as independence approached and Jamaica was about to face its own destiny. A new nation is born. The island of Jamaica, for 307 years a British possession, welcomes Princess Margaret and the Earl of Snowdon here to represent Queen Elizabeth at independence ceremonies. The princess is greeted by island dignitaries, including the Prime Minister, Sir William Bustamante, before riding through the streets of Kingston to a roaring reception. The country will be a dominion within the British Commonwealth and thus still maintain ties to all that the princess represents. At the stroke of midnight come impressive ceremonies led by the Prime Minister as the flag of the new nation is proudly raised on high. The island that has been under European domination since it was discovered by Columbus in 1494 embarks on a new era. The nation will be governed by a parliamentary democracy with a Senate and a House of Representatives. And when the reins of government are turned over to Prime Minister Bustamante, Jamaica becomes the first nation in the Western Hemisphere to gain independence since Panama became self-governing in 1903. Jamaica's economy is on more solid ground than other West Indian islands, but the new nation will need continuing aid before she becomes self-sufficient, a new member of the family of democratic nations. Other monumental changes were taking place as well in the hot, crowded neighborhoods of Kingston's inner city. Much of the population was poor, and some were so poor they were forced to squat in Kingston's notorious back of wall. Jamaican musical tastes were changing. Early recordings of Mento and Calypso that were made to cater to the tourist trade were never popular with the average Jamaican. For them, it was jump and boogie woogie that was popular. The recordings of American performers like Zoot Sims, Gene Hammond and Fats Domino satisfied the cravings of the crowds in Kingston's seething dance halls and those of the young music promoter Clement Seymour Dodd. Dodd was playing records of the dancers he promoted, records like those by R&B hitmaker Louis Jordan and his Timpani Five. Crazy about that woman called Caledonia is her name. Clement Dodd had always been interested in music, and as a young man, he followed Jamaican big bands like the Eric Dean's Orchestra. At first, he played the American R&B and jazz records he bought on work trips to the United States, and used his mother, Doris Darlington's liquor store, as his base during the early 50s, before creating his own traveling sound system called Coxon's Downbeat. His uncanny ability to pick the hottest material made him a superstar in the rough and tumble world of Kingston dance halls, where the competition was cutthroat and sometimes violent. One of the most famous venues for dancers was the Gold Coast, a beach setting far enough away from the hubbub of Kingston. The parties at the Gold Coast were usually all-day affairs and lasted late into the night. In the mid-50s, Clement Dodd began producing his own records on the Studio One and other related labels to supply his sound systems using a core of hand-picked musicians led by longtime friend saxophonist Roland Alfonso, and he quickly became the top record producer on the island. I tell you how it started. In the early, we usually use um, rhythm and blues and the boogie-woogie stuff, you know, like uh, Lionel Hampton and stuff like that. Then came the rock and roll era that wasn't so popular in Jamaica. Right? So that is where I decided to go in the studio and make recording suitable for dancing. Well, that was about 1955. At that stage, we 
was not aware that the music was good enough for commercial purpose. We were just building the music, especially for our sound system. And your sound get popular if you're playing records that they have a sound system men couldn't play. So in about 1961 now, other sound men started to record going into the studio because by then I was miles ahead of all the other guys. In 1956 I started recording local artists like Bonnie and Skitter, Lassen Perkins, Owen Gray and others. In the early years, each of my songs were constructed for dancing, especially for dancing. Every pounding beat. At this stage, this music was made specially for sound system, for dancing. So when you think of it, dance hall was from the beginning because that's where we usually promote our local recordings. Well, my main man at that time was Roland Young Fan, so we get together, home little line, build it into a tune. Then when we get hit to the rehearsal, I would be taking care of the rhythm section because I always thought that was very important. And because of the, the kind of um, sound I was producing, they, they call the sound Coxon's Downbeat, you know, because it had that heavy pounding dance every beat. With our studio now, we, we had opened it to every and anyone. People from the ghetto and whatever it is came in and this is how the trend started that guys came in with just lyrics of actual everyday living and stuff like that. Some of them were, but like I say, in those days I paid close attention to the lyrics and help them to make it make sense because like I said earlier, not even Bob Marley and the Wheelers came in there as professionals. They came in there as youth with the idea. Then we work with them to make their idea work and give them idea how to build new songs and, and stuff like that. You know, came up with some nice topic and then we build a story around the topic. By the